This is Grand Central Terminal. It's a terminal because trains terminate here. It's not a station. But be it terminal or station, this is the world's largest. This terminal covers 49 acres in Midtown Manhattan. It goes from 42nd Street all the way up to 97th Street. All the Park Avenue is built on our roof. This main concourse is 36,000 square feet. And every single day, more than 750,000 people come through here. The entire population of San Francisco. And little do they know as I walk through this palatial landmark train terminal, that there are all sorts of oddities, secrets, a hidden jewel worth 10 to $20 million, a basement that had shoot to kill orders if anyone was to go down there, and a myriad of secrets and mysteries. Here we are in the glass catwalks of Grand Central Terminal. These catwalks have actually some very utilitarian functions. They allow light to come in through the windows, through the glass floor below, and illuminate the terminal below us. We can also open up the windows and ventilate the terminal. It is also a walkway, a passageway, from one office tower to the next. Hence, it provides ventilation, illumination, transportation, and it's considered to be one of the finest examples and first example of form following function, which is a symbol of 20th century architecture. This is the Tiffany Clock Tower, high above Grand Central Terminal. This is the world's largest example of Tiffany glass. It's actually 13 feet in diameter. As secret and mysterious as this clock tower is, it also has another secret within, because by opening up this numeral six, it's actually a window that gives you a view, a commanding view, out onto Park Avenue South. Also, surrounding this window is the world's largest example of Tiffany glass and also the world's largest statuary, weighing as much as 60 locomotives. And it represents this terminal and this railroad. High on top is Mercury for speed, for industry. On Mercury's one side, there is Hercules for strength. Then there's also the goddess Minerva on the other side, representing intellectual thought. They all come together to define this railroad and this Grand Central Terminal, the world's largest train terminal. This is the former main waiting room of Grand Central Terminal. We now call it Vanderbilt Hall. This massive room was the waiting room as people were then traveling on trains all across this nation. Because in those days, no airports, no airliners. And when you travel then, you're traveling in the very symbol of luxury. This is known as the Oyster Bar Ramp because this leads down to the Oyster Bar, the oldest restaurant in Grand Central Terminal. As a matter of fact, it opened in 1913 when the terminal opened up. More importantly, it leads down to this rotunda. This rotunda is known as a whispering gallery because it creates an acoustic phenomenon. But because by simply standing in one corner and facing in, and another person in another corner facing in, and you speak to each other, your voice travels so perfectly well, you can hear each other better than you can hear someone whispering right in your ear. The curve of the ceiling creates a parabolic curve, and uh, your voice is so trapped, there's no choice but to shoot up and over to the other corner. I am now descending into Franklin Delano Roosevelt's private hidden train station. Now Franklin Delano Roosevelt had polio and he couldn't walk, but almost all of the American public had no idea of this. In order to keep it hidden, 
he would arrive in the secret train station. His train car behind me would carry his Pierce Arrow limousine. He would be seated in his Pierce Arrow limousine on that train car. He would be driven off of that train car, down this platform and directly into this elevator. Custom design for the narrow width of his Pierce Arrow limousine, for the length, for the weight of his armor-clad limousine, and so tall that the Secret Service can remain standing on the running boards of that limousine. Go directly in, doors closed, pull a lever, and it would bring FDR and his limousine all the way up right into the world of Astoria, sight unseen by the public, by the press, even by the world of Astoria workers. And over here, this, this pole, this beam, it seems very ordinary, but standing right here in front of it were uh, General Douglas MacArthur, Adlai Stevenson, Senator Avril Harriman, and other government uh, bigwigs and officials as they too were arriving on the train and about to go up into the world of Astoria via that elevator. This basement is the deepest basement in all of New York City. It is 13 stories below street level. It was so critical during the war effort that armed troops were stationed down there. And here's the reason why. These massive rotary converters were running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and converting alternating current into direct current and shooting that direct current over the electrified third rails and powering the trains in and out of Grand Central Terminal. Adolf Hitler knew about this sub-basement and he had a mission to send over submarines with saboteurs to make their way down here. And they almost made it. They almost got to destroy these and destroy 80% of the troop and war materiel movements. But those saboteurs made one little mistake. They checked their luggage into our luggage check. Well, the FBI sat on that luggage until the spies showed up. They were all arrested. They were all imprisoned, and two of them were executed. Now, this massive sub-basement still has these rotary converters and these original coal control boards still in place, just as a, a fact of history. However, now all the conversion from AC to DC is done by the solid-state rectifiers. And because of what nearly happened in 1942 is how we had it rebuilt in 1992, because they are triply redundant. Even if one is destroyed, the other two can handle the trains in and out. Even if two of them are destroyed, it can still handle it. Even with the third one destroyed, we have means of drawing power back. We learn from history. And this has to be one of the most secret and yet most historical areas of Grand Central Terminal.